week six finally made it to the end of my elite level confidence blueprint talked about five pillars so far first one is your head your heart and your hurt where we really got into understanding things that light us up in our life and things that drain us even though maybe we're good at it pillar two about addressing and not avoiding. When we focus on numbing our negative emotions, like Brene Brown says, it doesn't just numb your negative emotions, it numbs all your emotions. So feel your feels, as uh, as the kids say. Let yourself you know, acknowledge when something's tough, acknowledge when something's depressing. So that way, whenever the good things happen, you can feel those feelings all the more fully. Pillar three is love yourself to fully serve others, where we talked about maybe we're putting our own happiness on the shelf and we're doing things out of obligation and it's not really for the greater good. What it really is, is we don't want to have a conflict with someone. So if you're doing something for a greater good, like you're a new parent or something like that, and you're sacrificing your sleep for, you know, to obviously tend to your, your infant, that's one thing. But if you're just going along with things because you don't want to get into a fight with your significant other or a coworker, that's something that needs to be addressed Where we in Pillar 3 where we talk about loving yourself to fully serve others. Pillar 4 was about engaging with empathy, about communication strategies where we could make sure that we still felt heard and our point was put across, but we did it in a way that wouldn't elicit or cause defensive behaviors by the person talking to you. Last week, we talked about starting it scared and feeling the fear and doing it anyway is, is a famous quote and dug into unique ways about how procrastination hides and ways that maybe we don't see, you know, maybe procrastination is created by overly preparing for something. You know, you can only prepare so much before you actually need to do the thing. And remember, confidence comes after you do the thing not before it. Bravery and courage is what actually gets you moving and taking those steps to start it scared. So today, pillar six, after we do all of that, after we understand ourselves, after we address and not avoid, after we figure out how to communicate with people, how to serve ourselves and how to start it, pillar six is all about taking relentless responsibility for our actions relentless responsibility for our actions. It can be so easy to have the misconception of nothing good's ever gonna happen to me, the world is out to get me, everyone's against me. You know, you're kind of like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh or Charlie Brown with the little like rain cloud over your head all the time. That's a misconception. Things might be tough. I'm not saying they aren't. And you might have a lot of, you know, body blows coming at you just seem to be hitting you from all the sides. But it is a misconception to think that the world is out to get you. The thought correction to this is recognizing and accepting that the only thing you can be 100% in control of is your actions and reactions. The only thing you can be 100% control of is your actions and your reactions to the situations that life throws at you. You could have the best app in the world for weather, right? Weather, you know, the weather forecaster says, you know, hundred percent chance of sun. You ever been caught in a storm? I know I have. Regardless of what you think you can control outside of yourself, you can't control things. Like just because you have that great app on your phone doesn't mean that it's going to control the weather, right? I mean, that's absurd to think about it that way. But a lot of times we get we get thought in this misconception that everything is happening to us and everything's out to get us and we should be able to control these things. And maybe if we try just a little bit harder, we'll be able to control our kids or our, our job or our pet, like my pet sitting behind me. I recognize I can't control her, you know, beyond a certain point or her just innate ability to go bark at the FedEx delivery is just her dogness, right? So I could, um, you know, roll in the dice having her in my office right now with me, but I accept responsibility for that. If she were to go bark at the window right now and interrupt this recording, 
Her name's Henley, by the way, for those of you that have not met her. I could be upset about it, or I could accept that I had the responsibility. I could have closed my door and, and put the thing in front of it so she can't come barging in here. Because the only thing I can control 100% is myself and my reactions. That doesn't mean that you are able to control them just yet. You might need to learn to control your reactions. I know, I I mean, I, I still work on this to this day. And if you find yourself losing control of your reactions, try to figure out what set you off, what it was about that. So you can take stock of that next time when you feel those feelings in your body, because your body will give you signs. So the authentic action is relentlessly review your responses in word and thought and action and those physical reactions we just, and physical responses I just talked about. And take responsibility for how you contribute to the situation, however small. And that's obviously goes without saying for things that happen good. You want to you want to take credit for those, how you contributed to make whatever it was a success. But also, how did you contribute, however small, to maybe an outcome that you didn't find pleasing or was not the expected outcome that you wanted? So if we take relentless responsibility for our actions and realize we're the only thing that we can control, how does that transform your confidence? The confidence transformation comes when you embrace responsibility, it means acknowledging both successes and failures as learning opportunities. I was just talking to a guy today and I said to him, I said, look, you got two outcomes when something happens. You either win or you learn. You either win or you learn. If, if the outcome wasn't what you wanted, would you learn from it? How can you do better? How did you contribute to that outcome? What could you change? Because when we learn from our mistakes and actively seek improvement, you become more confident in your ability to adapt and grow. When you learn from mistakes and actively seek improvement, you become more confident in your ability to adapt and grow. So thanks for joining me on this journey over these past six weeks of the six pillars, understanding our head, our heart, and our hurt. Pillar two is addressing to and avoid. Pillar three is love yourself to fully serve others. Pillar four, engage with empathy. Pillar five, start it scared. And today, pillar six, relentless responsibility. If you want to talk about ways that your sense of responsibility shows up or maybe you want it to be improved, again, offer this free one-hour calls. I just did one today. We chatted about everything from, you know, running a, a you know, a fried chicken joint to real estate. So those calls are yours where we can really work through some things together. So there's a link at the bottom of this. Always love to hear from you. If you don't want to do the call, just let me know what resonated with you. Take care, everybody. Onward and upward. Thanks.